This is the Samoto ST NF2 four stroke 7cc engine sent to me from Sterling Kits. This is a complete four stroke kit that you build yourself. It runs off of RC Nitro fuel. If you're into model kits, like I, I was totally into building RC cars when I was younger. Now, you know, most of them are ready to run. And this is just looks absolutely amazing. I've always wanted to build an engine. The closest I have come to building an engine is replacing the head gasket on a 1989 Toyota Supra. So when it comes to engine building, I am a complete noob. So um, be gentle with me if I uh, don't say all the parts correctly. Now this uh, torque driver is available also from Sterling Kit and uh, basically everything is anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5 torque specs. So this is, comes in real handy to make quick work of assembling the engine. We're going to start with the crankshaft here and adding bearing, a seal, and then a washer along with the locking pin. Now I'm using just regular motor oil to lubricate these parts. Then we're going to take our drive wheel. We want to make sure that the bearing, the dark part, is faced outward and then we're going to slip it right over the guide pin. Then we're going to take our flywheel and put it on the back of that and we're going to secure it with a nut. I would actually recommend uh, using some type of Loctite on here because during my testing I found that that nut does come off pretty easily. Next we're going to insert the pistons into the crankcase. However, your piston rings are actually inside your piston sleeves. So if you're wondering where they're at, there they are. Next, I'm going to just lubricate the pistons before I insert our uh, piston rings right here. And they are a little bit of tension, but they will just snap right in. And of course, you're going to do that to both. Again, I'm just using just some regular motor oil for this for lubrication. And now that we're done with this, we're going to insert the pistons into the sleeves. But before we insert the piston, we're going to actually have to remove the rod cap on the bottom of both of them. So you're going to remove all four screws for both pistons. You notice that there is no bearing inserts for these. So they're just, I believe, made out of brass. And next we're just going to lubricate the piston sleeves, um, both of them. Be generous with this because it'll just make it a lot easier to insert. Now you do get this piston ring compression tool. It actually works very well. So you're gonna push your piston in there. It'll compress the piston ring and you simply just slide it in or push it in. And you do this for both. And it's pretty gratifying actually. And then right in there. Very simple. And just go ahead and turn it over and we're gonna just turn the piston so that it's facing the same direction. Now we're going to insert our crankshaft and basically lube up where our um, bearings would have gone if there were any. Next we're going to put our connecting rod cap on and we're going to just thumb tight our uh, connecting rod bolts in, not all the way, and then we're going to do a rinse and repeat for the next piston. Now you want to make sure that these connecting rod caps are on a correct orientation so when I uh, torque these down here, these rod bolts, I'll show you what I mean. So right here you'll see that uh, right there. there it's keyed so you want to make sure that uh, they are lined up correctly. Next the crankcase gaskets are installed. Since the crank is going to actually be placed right in here I'm going to go ahead and lube up any of these surfaces. Then I'm going to sandwich it with the crankcase chassis here. Then it gets attached with six screws. And just inspect the gasket make sure everything's compressed nicely. It's pretty cool to actually turn the flywheel and see the pistons move up and down. Now we're going to assemble the camshaft. You're going to put an E-clip in, and I kind of messed up this one. And uh, because I put in that uh, pin, and then a gasket, and then a bearing, and I stacked it a little wrong. I realized this after the fact, and I actually had to restack uh, my gasket and then my bearing. You'll see it on the next shot that I actually fixed it. My mistake. So. Once I figured out my mistake, I uh, insert the E-clip here and then I push the locking pin in and the pulley. This takes a little bit of effort to hammer it down and then you put another E-clip to secure it. Then we're going to carefully insert the camshaft into the cylinder head block. 
on the other end, we're going to insert a gasket. It's kind of firm to push in. And then we're going to put our bearing in. And then we're going to secure it all with another E-clip. And there we go. Next, we're going to place our head gasket down. You notice that it's affixed with six screws. And we just want to make sure everything is nice and aligned. Once everything is torqued down, inspect your head gasket. Next is the most tedious part, is the rocker assemblies. You're going to have to build two of these using four E-clips, and I did lose one. Now I did lubricate these four valves. Not sure if it's needed, but I did it anyways. Next, we're going to place the four valve heads on. And before we put the rockers completely on, I'm going to just go ahead and lube all the valve heads. Then I'm going to place the rockers on. I'm not going to tighten the screws down yet. And then I'm just going to lubricate all the connecting points. And then inspect your work. Next, we're going to assemble the intake manifold. You'll notice it is a multi-layer gasket. It just simply takes two screws to fasten it. And next, we're going to attach the carburetor slash fuel pump. And this only takes two screws. And of course, inspect your gaskets. Make sure everything is nice and even. Next, we're going to attach our belt tensioner. Two screws for that. Next will be an idler pulley. Next is assembling this fan. Yeah, seven blades. Have fun with that. Next, we need to adjust our timing. You will see a dot on the camshaft and with the crank. So we want to make sure those two dots are lined up perfectly. Once you have them both lined up, you're going to put your belt on to help keep them both in place. Once it is in place, you can go ahead and uh, tighten your tensioner for your belt and proceed to tighten down your fan. Then we're going to install our exhaust headers. You are going to put two gaskets down and then with the four screws for the exhaust headers. Then attach your starter bracket. Next will be the starter pinion. You're going to use two grub screws. I suggest that you put the grub screws in first just a little bit before we put it onto the shaft for the motor. Then you're going to put it on the shaft loosely. Don't do it too tight because we want to be able to adjust this later. You want to make sure that one of those grub screws is on the flat part of the shaft for the starter motor. I found it easier to put the starter motor in and then secure it afterwards. And everything lined up rather easily. Next will be the valve cover gasket. And this is held on with eight screws. And of course, inspect your gasket to make sure it's sealed properly. Next, you will need two glow plugs and you will need to purchase this separately from the Sterling kit. And you wanna make sure that uh, when you take this out that that washer is definitely on there before you insert the glow plug. Next, I grabbed a 5 16 deep socket and a uh, nice little ratcheting wrench, and I made sure that these glow plugs were nice and snug. Don't over tighten them. Just snug will definitely do. And of course, just inspect the work. This thing is coming along rather nicely. Next, we're going to have this little exhaust nozzle, and this is going to go right at the bottom. Make sure you have the gasket on. And the base part of the engine is now assembled. This thing just looks so cool. And it was such a fun build. Very educational as well. Then there's only two more steps, which is fuel and electrical. But I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor. That is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services, such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. Next, we need to attach the ground. Just one simple cable for the ground. And then we're going to insert our spark plug, glow plug uh, wires here right on top and you should feel them snap in. Next we're going to insert our little clips here for the starter 
and uh, these are press fit. You may want to cut them and solder them because you'll see that uh, you have to do a drastic bend here so it doesn't hit your cooling fan. Next, we're going to cut some tubing. I'm actually using a PTFE cutter from one of my 3D printers to cut the tubing, and it makes it simple work of that. And right now we're going to do our exhaust tubing from underneath. And I'm actually going to increase that, then our fuel supply on the top, and another breather hose. Then you're going to use some nitro fuel. Make sure it's 20 to 25% oil, because that's going to help lubricate the engine. There is no separate oil reservoir or anything. It's blended within the fuel. So you want to make sure that you use the correct ratio. Then you're going to want a battery for the starter. This is a 2S LiPo 6200. You don't need anything that powerful. It's just power, powering up your starter motor. And this already has a nice Dean's connector on it, which is what's on your wiring kit. And right here is your starter button. Now, all that's left is to test it out. Now, given the, what position your throttle is at, may determine if it starts or not. So you may have to mess around with that. So that's what I'm doing on the right-hand side here is I'm just barely moving the throttle and seeing if it will start. So I didn't do it on that time and giving it a little bit more of a turn there. And there we go. But you'll see that the exhaust tube on the bottom is pushing a lot. A lot of uh, fuel out or combustion gases or whatever so I believe I am running very lean and it's also coming out of the exhaust as well so you want this to burn a lot cleaner than it is and um, yeah that, that I actually have a water bottle attached to that hose because otherwise it'll be spraying all over me and here I actually adjusted the carb needle setting a little bit you see that it did decrease the flow coming out of the exhaust on the bottom there and uh, you definitely want to have this engine like secured to a table because I'm having to hold it in place well, not making sure that the fan isn't being contacted by anything and it gets a little warm too but here I'm going to just kill the engine here and I'm going to try to start it again with a lower idle and I'm just adjusting again the throttle here but I also want to ramp it up and down here. So we're going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to adjust the, the needle one more time here and see if I could get a much cleaner burn where I'm not exhausting as much um, out the bottom. And I adjusted it one more time. The needle is actually that screw in the upper right hand corner right where the fuel comes in. And you can see now I'm not pushing nearly as much uh, gas and you know oil and debris out of the bottom there whatever you want to call it it's burning a lot more efficiently and barely having any gas coming out of the exhaust i believe this is just such a fun project for anyone and even if you don't use this as for any type of project i think that this is just a great display piece and learning exercise so if you're looking to purchase one of these engines for yourself to build Please uh, go ahead and check the description below. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripods Garage.